Hello, this is going to be a very different video, I guess, than most of the videos on this YouTube channel. And it's been a long time since I've uploaded anything, or we've uploaded anything, so I apologize for that. And I um, always appreciate all the, the great comments and uh, folks that, that watch our videos. I apologize for the lighting in my house. It's just dark, just super dark. Uh, it's just the way, <laughs> way it's always been. Um, this is going to be a really long video. I'm probably going to ramble a whole lot, but it's kind of crazy. This is going to be a video where I talk about a video, and I'm just going to try to hook it all together somehow. But the first part of this video, if it were going to have a heading, it would be what I'm trying to do. So what I've been trying to do for ever since at least 2016 is to produce another CD of original gospel songs that my father wrote. Uh, we produced one together called... Um, Oh, drawing a blank, called um, Shepherd of My Soul. I meant to have one in my hand here where I could show you that, but most of you probably already know about that CD. Had about, I can't remember, 17 songs or so, and I think he, he wrote 14 of those. He wrote about 50 plus songs. He was really prolific. Uh, most of them, or a lot of them, have not been recorded. And so that's what I'm trying to do is record them and put them out there where people can hear them because uh, what good is a great song if nobody can hear about it or hear it um, especially the words because what he was writing about was so important and uh, even some of the ones that they did record when I say they I mean him and his his brother or brothers uh, the Wilson brothers so he sang my dad sang harmony and wrote songs gospel songs he played with his brother Ray um, who recently uh, has passed away recently at the time of this video and then their younger brother Henry is still alive and he was the, the guitar picker um, really advanced guitar picker and then Ray also played the guitar more more like I play with a flat pick um, more in that traditional Doc Watson kind of style not to say that he learned from Doc Watson or anything I'm rambling already um, so when I say they, so they recorded some of Dad's songs. A lot of them they didn't, a lot of them they did. Some of the ones they did, honestly, I, I never felt like they did them justice because they didn't really spend that much time learning the songs and they would just sort of try to put them down and then they wouldn't come back to them. Most of the time they didn't really sing many of, of the original songs and I, and I hate that. I, I feel like that might be a mistake that a lot of folks make. Um, it's great to cover songs and crowds in particular love uh, songs that they've heard before that they know uh, but you really should be I feel like to do yourself justice you should do your own thing too you know your own original material so they did some of that but but not enough in my opinion so what I'm trying to do is go back and record some of those songs and release those songs digitally and on CD so somebody might who is more well much more well known hopefully than I am might want to um, record those songs publish those songs get them out there and I really don't care anything about any kind of royalties I just want the songs uh, to not go unheard or to be forgotten so that's what I'm trying to do now in addition to this channel there is a YouTube channel I'll try to put a link to it I don't know where it'll be somewhere here in this video um, and I think the name of that channel is Paul Wade Wilson Music or Paul Wade Wilson Topic. And it's funny because I didn't even know that this channel existed for a long time. It was Debbie Nixon, uh, one of the folks who watches the Blind Pig channel, who told me about it. So I upload these songs as singles to CD Baby once I'm finished with them and I'm moving on to another song. And CD Baby then pushes the songs out there to Spotify and Pandora and YouTube. But I didn't really know, I thought there was just sort of like this YouTube music um, thing that you could subscribe to or whatever. I didn't realize that it creates an actual channel. But anyway, you can go to that channel and you can hear all the songs that I've done uh, so far. And I'm, I meant to have a list with me. with me. I may step over and get that list in a second. And uh, it's, it's not really a video, it's usually just a still image. Well, it's not usually. At that channel, it's all just a still image and then the audio um, from the recordings that I've made here in my little home studio. And uh, 
that process uh, is very involved, especially when you're working a full-time job. I don't, it might, I might do like two songs in a year, if that. Um, it's been an enjoyable process. One thing it has involved is playing with different musicians from all over the world. Now, I'm making, I would say, 80% or better of the music, but certain songs do feature other musicians. Um, there's piano players, there's a cello player, a uh, viola player, a um, violin player, there's um, a steel player uh, from Pennsylvania, uh, Mr. Zach Rowland, I believe is his name. Um, I've maybe linked to them before on our YouTube channel. It's another father and son uh, gospel group. He's playing steel play steel on one of those songs. Um, there's just uh, it's been really great working with those different musicians, and I really appreciated all of them agreeing to play on these recordings and just really high caliber uh, musicians that I've been able to collaborate with in this. So I, I like that. I've enjoyed that part. It's been a lot of fun. Now some folks like who listen to this channel might say, oh, you, you shouldn't do that. You should just keep it all Appalachian. You know, just you and a couple of guitars or you and a mandolin. You know, just keep it Appalachian. Uh, keep it more like you and your dad uh, were doing on this channel or keep it more like he and his brother were doing. Well, I'm, I understand that and I would expect that and appreciate that to some degree. But I'm trying to do something a little different, which is showcase the songs. I'm trying to show the potential of those songs melodically, um, and because they're they're pretty well written songs, I think, both musically and lyrically. And so I'm trying to expand and and take a little broader uh, approach. And to be honest with you, Dad did not write bluegrass gospel. I mean, they're not bluegrass songs. What are they? I don't know exactly. And that's something that their, the youngest brother, my Uncle Henry, said back when he heard Shepherd of My Soul for the first time. He listened through the CD and he said, you know, that's really good, but what is it? Uh, you know, what category is that? It's not, it's not country gospel. It's definitely not southern gospel. Um, it's not bluegrass gospel. So what is it? Well, I don't know. I guess it's Jerry Wilson gospel. Uh, it's just sort of a more natural, when I say natural, I mean it's not trying to do an overt style. You know, I, I love bluegrass, but it can be a little bit formulaic. You know, you hit sort of the same guitar runs in sort of the same places in many of the songs that are bluegrass. And that's not a bad thing, I'm just saying that's different from, from what Dad was writing. They're not really, you could do them as bluegrass, and maybe someday somebody will, I hope so but they're not really bluegrass songs. And so, anyway, that's a little bit about why I incorporate these different instruments. Now, at the time that I am talking here and rambling, the next song that's going to be released and uploaded to that channel is called Bright Shining Light. And um, it's mostly me. I did have um, a little collaboration there with uh, someone who played some strings uh, just on a keyboard there. Uh, but other than that, it's it's all me, uh, the guitar and vocal and bass and all that, that stuff. Um, at the time this video that you're watching now is out, that song may be released already or it may be still a couple of weeks down the road. I'm waiting on some, some original cover art that someone's making for me, trying to paint the concept of the song, the bright shining light in the wilderness. And I don't have that yet, so I won't be able to release that song until I get that. But today, I'm not going to be talking about that song or the other uh, eight or ten that are there uh, on that channel. I'm going to be talking to you about the second to last one to be released, which is a song Dad wrote back in the 80s called See the Salvation of the Lord. And back in the 80s, as far as his original songs, it was one of the more popular ones um, that he wrote that they would do. When I say popular, I mean somebody might actually ask to hear it when they were um, performing somewhere. Uh, they recorded it, um, or they did it a lot, rather, with just him and Ray, two flat tops. They also recorded it on a little cassette called uh, Little White Church, where uh, their brother, younger brother Henry played it did a phenomenal job, but at that time, something that was really popular was chorus 
on an electric guitar, and it's just something that I don't really care for, and neither did Dad or uh, his middle brother, Ray. Uh, but still, Henry did a, an awesome job. Now, coming back to that, that idea of popularity, I think one thing that made that song kind of popular back when they did it a little bit was the way that Ray played it on the guitar when he went to the chorus. It was just kind of this little bouncy way of doing it. Um, and he, he would go to the C position, and he would kind of pick his finger up off of that D string and hit the G string open and then put his finger on it. Just kind of a little syncopated thing back and forth between those two strings. And she is So I wanted to have that in my recording of the song, but I didn't want to do the same thing. I could have. I could have gotten a flat top and seen Ray play that that break, you know, hundreds of times. I could have played it uh, just like that or somewhat like that. But I wanted to have that same sound, but do it on a different instrument. And I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. Now that's why it was uh, really popular, I feel like, with a lot of people. It's not why I liked it so much. I liked it so much as a literature major because that song begins in media race. And I'll put that on the screen so you can see how that's spelled. Now that's Latin, um, but it means in the middle of something. So in other words, when the story opens, when the song starts, boom, it's already in, uh, there's action going on, rising action going on. If you think about a plot diagram of a story, and you've got your climax up here, you know, setting established here, rising action. Most things kind of start in a calmer moment. This song starts just in medias race, right in the middle of things. The children of Israel are there at the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army right there on their heels. They've hit a wall. They think they can't go any further. And it's like... Uh, impending doom, impending death. Either they're going to be wiped out right there and killed, or they're going to be taken back uh, to be made as slaves. That's what I thought was so cool about this song um, back when I first heard it, and still to this day, that it starts that way. Then it has a really cool transition in the middle where it jumps ahead biblically, jumps ahead historically, to Saul on the road of Damascus. He's about to be turned into Paul. There's going to be another big climax. So it's kind of like in medias race, in medias race again uh, in that song. And then as a lot of Pap's songs, Dad's songs, then toward the end he would reflect that back onto himself personally. So at the beginning of the song you've got the children of Israel at the Red Sea, sort of that sea of death. And then in the final course, I, you know, the speaker of the song, I was at the sea of death. I needed to be rescued. Um, so it's a very cool uh, song. Now, bearing that in mind, I wanted to try to emphasize that opening scene, maybe more than Dad and Ray ever did. And I thought, how am I really going to emphasize that? Well, I'm going to really try to establish the setting musically. I don't have a big budget where I can go out and shoot a, a video, <laughs> you know, with hundreds or thousands of um, extras down on the seashore. So I tried to do it musically. So I thought, let me get some really old or odd instruments. Um, some of the oldest instruments, you got the psaltery, which I did learn to play a little bit and played on uh, a Christmas album uh, that Dad and I did called Songs of Christmas. I played it both with my fingers and with a little horsehair bow. That's one of the oldest instruments. It didn't seem to suit this song, um, so I didn't go there. Uh, well, maybe even older than that is the lyre or lyre, L-Y-R-E, I believe. I thought about getting one and trying to play it, and I thought, let me just see if I can find somebody who's really good on that instrument. The ten-string one uh, was the one I was interested in. That's probably the oldest one, like David played. And I uh, did find someone. <laughs> Beyond, you know, any hope or expectation I had, um, Thanasis Cleopas, and I'm probably butchering his name, later in the latter half of this video, if you make it that far, you'll get to see uh, him playing the, the lyre or lyre, and I encourage you to check out his channel, just uh, amazing music that he makes, 
but he agreed to do that. And I didn't, I can't write music, so I had to just describe to him, here's what I want you to do. I want you to start off in an A minor. The song is written in A major. Start off in an A minor. I want you to create a lament, and then I want that to gradually segue into A major. The, the, the thought of that being, okay, they're trapped there, and the children of Israel are just giving Moses, you know, down the road, giving him heck. Hey, we should have just died in, Israel, in Egypt. Why did you bring us out here to die? There's not even any graves. Uh, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. Um, and then, of course, he tells them, now you're going to see, behold, and see the salvation of the Lord, which is when God parts the Red Sea and they cross. But there's that moment of despair of what are we going to do? So that's what I wanted to happen musically. Um, so there's that instrument. Um, another instrument that I play is not an old instrument. It's 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 very young instrument, but it has an old sound. And later in the later in the video, you're going to learn a lot more about this. What it's called. Um, you'll get to hear it be played by itself. And by the way, when you see that video, that part of the video, I apologize. Uh, the camera was kind of panned down, and you're looking at my big old hairy kneecap there. Um, I didn't plan on that video to be used. I recorded that video so I could hear myself playing this instrument back. This is called the Mountain Lark. There'll be more inf information about it in the video. I'm playing it in the opening of the song and actually through the entirety of the song. One thing that I didn't cover later, um, I did talk about who made it, uh, all that good stuff, um, but I didn't uh, comment on how I came to possess this. So um, the gentleman who made it, made it for a local musician here in Brasstown, Mr. Larry Teams, who was an excellent dobro player. And I guess he had ordered this instrument, um, this custom instrument. It's not an instrument you're going to go find somewhere. It was, it was an original instrument uh, that was made for him. And he was a great dobro, dobro player. He came here to my house actually a couple of times just over my shoulder and played with me, Dad, Ray, um, Perry Stock up the bass player, uh, great dobro player. We always talked about, hey, we need to play more together, and you know how it is. We didn't ever get around to playing. I think we played those two times together. But he was a, a well liked, super nice guy here in this area, and I believe he passed away with cancer before the the lark was ever uh, finished. Well, somewhere probably about 2017, 2018, the Brasstown Fire Department here they used to have, or maybe they still do, an annual auction to try to raise money. They're building a new firehouse. This uh, came up um, at auction. As soon as I heard them say, we, we actually made the music before the auction stopped. I put my guitar up, you know, I was about to leave. They held this up and started talking about it, that it was made for Larry Teams. As soon as I heard them say that it's tuned in, a, in an A, I thought, I'm going to get that instrument and I'm either going to use it on See the Salvation of the Lord or the Sinless One which is another song of Paps that's never been recorded. Well, I wound up using it on this song, See the Salvation of the Lord. So more about that instrument later. Another thing that you'll see uh, here, rather, in the song is the shofar. I wound up playing the shofar. I tried to get someone else to play it. I wasn't successful. Uh, I wound up playing it, and I played it as a break or an intermission, really short intermission between the first verse and the second verse. Now this may, may be the oldest instrument, for, for all I know, or for all historians know. This is, uh, would have been what was played um, at the walls of Jericho, I, I think. Um, I th before I got it, I thought I could possibly play it a little bit, and it's kind of funny why I thought that. My Uncle Ray, the one I just mentioned a few times in this video, he, had a, he was a woodcutter for part of the time. He had an old logging truck across the creek down here below my house that was just sort of abandoned in the woods, and it had some big air horns on the top of it. When I was a kid, I, I unscrewed one of those air horns. It was about this long. It was shaped like a bugle. And I discovered I could purse my lips and blow through it, and I could make a really loud sound that would carry for miles, really. It would, you know, I'd hear dogs like miles away howl back, and sometimes they would even show up uh, where I was blowing that. I'd, I'd call them over from, you know, across into other hollers. <clears throat> and, you know, fox hunters use the same kind of premise. So because I had been able to do that when I was a kid, and I loved that, that horn, I don't know what became of it, where I put it, 
I thought, hey, maybe I could do this shofar thing. So what I started doing, I had this laying by my bed, and every morning before I would go to work, I'd pick it up, and I would just try to blow two notes, the two notes that you hear in the song. And uh, it started off pretty pathetic. And if I tried to blow it, blow it right now, it would probably be really pathetic, because that was uh, a long months back, and I've, I do that sometimes. I learn how to play an instrument a little bit, and then I don't pick it up anymore, and I forget everything that I learned. I definitely did that with the psaltery that I was talking about earlier. So those three instruments are all at the beginning, and they're all to try to establish that more ancient sound, and to establish the predicament, the big-time predicament, that the children of Israel were in at that moment. Also, something I think is pretty cool at the, at the beginning, you'll also hear waves on the shore. Believe it or not, those are actual waves of the Red Sea. They're not just any uh, waves. I was able to find someone who had rec a video recording of the Red Sea and ask them permission to have just the audio uh, to put at the beginning of that song. So I think that's really cool. You're hearing not just any sea, you're hearing the Red Sea at the beginning of that. And you may be like me, you may have heard critics say, oh, it's not even some, it's that deep, it's a little tiny body of water. No, uh, it's not really true. Uh, you can find video of the Red Sea here on YouTube. And especially for elderly pe people, children, like you would have had in that company of uh, Israelites, uh, it was they couldn't just walk, wade through it. Of course, the, the, the joke response to those critics is to say, wow, that's even more impressive that God drowned and drowned uh, the whole Egyptian army in that little, you know, three feet uh, body of water that you're, you're describing or talking about. Um, let's see, anything else about the opening of the song? Oh, yes, there's an amazing female vocalist at the beginning of that song. So here, if I don't run out of uh, room on my flip cam, is the story behind that. I took um, those verses in the book of Exodus where the children of Israel say, Moses, you know, you, you dummy, you brought us out here, we're doomed. Um, I took those from the King James Version, I took those verses and then the verses where he responds and I sent them uh, to a nice gentleman I found on the internet. I'll have to look up his name, maybe put it in this video. I said, could you translate... Um, these into Hebrew for me. So he did. He actually did about three or four versions of each verse because he knew someone was going to try to sing this. And he said, you know, here's different ways of saying this in Hebrew. Um, you know, you pick the one that works the best. And then I found this singer, um, this amazing female singer. Now, I'm not going to tell you her name, nor am I going to list her name. And this may sound made up, but because she is professional enough to have her own a record deal on a record label, she would not be allowed to be on my record label, if that makes any sense. So I, when the CD comes out, I may take the letters of her name and kind of scramble them up, um, but that was part of our agreement was that I would not mention her name. Here's what's super amazing about her. She can sing in multiple languages, English, Serbian, um, I don't know what and all. So she's not Hebrew or, or uh, she's not Jewish but she sang this in Hebrew. Now, someone might point out, oh, the children of Israel, they, they wouldn't have, or the Bible wasn't written in Hebrew, or they would I don't know. You know, I, I just felt like it would make sense for them to be saying those things in Hebrew. I don't know if they would have still been speaking, you know, what they, what everybody was speaking back in Egypt. What is it? I'm drawing a blank right now. Maybe I can put that on the screen. I don't know if they would have, when they were at the Red Sea, what they would have spoken in, but I had it translated into Hebrew, she sang it. Now, the, the piece of music, because uh, Thanasis had already made the piece of music, and he didn't know if a man was going to be singing it or a woman was going to be singing it, so she had to adapt to the pitch that was already there. She had to sort of create, uh, how am I going <laughs> to sing this? So she, of course, she sings the, the part that the Hebrew children, their complaints, she sings that in the minor in the lament part. She sings Moses' part when it changes to A major, <coughs> when the song has a happier sound. I'm very happy with how that overture, as I'm calling it, that introduction to Dad's song, super happy with how it turned out. I'm a little less happy with how my part turned out 
where I sing the actual song. Uh, I don't feel like I was finished with it, but I just had to move on. I wanted to try to get Katie of the Presley Girls to maybe put some violin, some fiddle, as uh, she would call it, and I would call it too, really, in that second verse. I uh, never got around to that. I wanted to sort of try to take some of the guitar runs that Henry had played back in that 80s recording and see if I could find them on the mandolin, then have Kate show that to Katie, have her play it on the fiddle. I never did get to do that. Also, of course, Pap was not here to sing that high harmony part. I tried it in a couple of places. It wouldn't have been right to not have at least some high tenor in there. Uh, I wasn't going to sing it the whole time. Um, but I did try that. Also, the Gibson Dove, of course, which you've seen in hundreds of these videos, is I'm playing it, and I'm trying to play it the way Dad would have played it, which is to really emphasize the top two strings, the A and the E string, a very percussive way that he would play that rhythm. So you should hear that in the left speaker when you hear this song. Um, it's also in the overture, too. It's kind of strumming in there in the left speaker, and it, it all kind of... That part, I felt like, uh, harmonized really well. I was less satisfied with, with my singing uh, in the song, but overall, maybe it does some justice to the song. Um, so, that's enough rambling, I believe. I'm looking at my little note cards to see if there's anything that I didn't kind of cover. I will step over and get that list of songs. I'll be right back. So if you go to the other YouTube channel, that Paul Wade Wilson YouTube channel, these are the songs that are uploaded there. Jesus, You Kept Me From Falling Today, which was the very first song that Dad ever wrote and has always been one of my very favorites. Mr. Josh Griggs that you see in another video or two on my channel here, like Life's Railway, and you also see him on the Celebrating Appalachia channel, an interview with him. He played the, he played the piano on Jesus, You Kept Me From Falling. One of my favorite songs of Dad's, uh, Heaven's Brightest Glory, which uh, features Mr. Zach Rowland on the steel. Uh, Temptation is Great, one of another really old song of Paps, probably written in the late 60s. The Heavens Declare the Glory of God, another song he wrote in the 90s. Uh, I'm Not the Servant I Should Be, a very old song, probably late 60s. In Heaven It Won't Be That Way, that's a song he wrote in the 80s. I Feel Him Touch My Soul, which is in the early 2000s here, right about the time I built my house. Watch and Pray, that's a super old song, uh, late 60s, early 70s. Live to Never Die, that song is more recent times, maybe a few years before he passed. Um, then there's a song that I wrote about him. That's the only song on that YouTube channel he didn't write. Uh, I wrote a song called a Wonder, or Hiawassee, or a.k.a. The Ballad of Jerry Wilson, which is it just kind of tells a little bit of his life story. Those songs you can all find on that YouTube channel. Of those, uh, I'm going to say really probably just I'm Not the Servant I Should Be, Watch and Pray, Temptation is, no, not Temptation is Great, Heaven's Brightest Glory, and The Heavens Declare the Glory of God. Those are the ones I really, I'm, I'm kind of satisfied with. Some of them I'm not very satisfied with. But um, again, I'm just trying to let people hear the songs. The reason I'm... The video uh, cut off there. What I was about to say, that way if something were to happen to me, the reason I'm uploading these songs as singles one at a time is that way if something were to happen to me, not to be morbid or anything, before I could actually release the whole CD, at least those singles would be out there. Maybe somebody might stumble upon them. I'm not sure. Uh, it's a long process with that whole uploading because you've got the sample rates, got to be converted, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I have pretty good quality recording here, but not as great once it's converted to like an MP4, which is what all the streaming stuff is. Um, but these days, you know, people aren't buying many CDs. CDs, it's mostly digital distribution. Anyway, more, you'll get to hear this song, and then you'll get to hear these instruments, and um, more about that if you've made it this far. And uh, thanks for watching.
that dreaded sea of death With Satan snares around me Death is my reward I heard the voice of Jesus He bid me to come And see the sound 